Welcome to the Cinema Rag, where we celebrate the greatest and worst in Hollywood films and their most self-indulgent, narcissistic actors, directors, and producers. Here, we will laud and malign Hollywood's seedier elements with levity and humor. They love cinema as much as anyone does. and They've been talking about it for over 30 years. Time to get trashy. Here's Gregory and May. Hello, everybody. This is Gregory, and welcome back to another episode of The Cinema Rag. I hope you're doing well today. Today, we're going to talk about Colin Farrell and how I wish Tom Cruise had Colin Farrell's career, because I think there are some similarities between the two. Most of you guys are very familiar with Colin Farrell. He is 47, 46 years old, and he busted out into the scene in the early nods. I remember, because at this point, I'm already like in my late 20s, and I just remember just there there must have been like a, 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 a literally a one year period where it seemed like he was in seven movies. So if you go through his filmography, he really hits it big in 2002. Because 2002, he did some movies like Tiger Land was well received in 2000. But really, it's 2002. He has Hearts War, which I believe was with Bruce Willis. But he's the second lead. Minority Report with Cruise. We covered that in the Cruise filmography part two. And Phone Booth, where it's essentially him alone in a phone booth. Then he follows that up in 2003. He has five movies in 2003. The Recruit, the CIA movie with Pacino, Daredevil with Affleck, Veronica Guerin, where he plays with a little accent, but we won't count that. It's kind of a small cameo. SWAT, the classic movie SWAT with, I mean, who's in this LL Cool J, Michelle Rodriguez, Samuel L. Jackson, Jeremy Renner, Young Renner, before he was that well known. And then you have Intermission. Then he comes out in 2004 with Alexander. If you remember that movie, that movie was Oliver Stone. It's really Stone's first like major tank. It's got Angelina Jolie in it. And of course, Alexander the Great is played by Colin Farrell. It was, uh, we'll just call it, we'll give it a euphemism. It was ambitious, but it largely failed. Then he does Terrence Malick's The New World. So, I mean, already, like within three years, he's already worked with Spielberg, Schumacher, twice, Stone, and Malick. And Malick, of course, does movies like only, what, every 15, 20 years? He's done like five movies. Then it's 2006, he gets to work with, oh, no, no someone not even that well known, like Michael Mann. He works with Michael Mann and does Miami Vice, that classic movie with uh, Jamie Foxx. Then he does a small movie, a Robert Town movie called Ask the Dust with uh, Salmita Hayek, one of my crushes as a kid. And then, and then he does In Bruges in 2008. And then by that point, his career does begin to change. So if you look at the first six years, and he's, again, you know, he's in his late 20s. He's really gravitating toward whatever Hollywood gives him. And he's taking the roles that are going to get him paid, going to get him publicity, and make him as much of an A-list star as possible. Now, the large majority of these movies that were at least the mainstream movies. He's not really the lead. So if you look at The Recruit, that's more Pacino, Minor Report, of course, is Cruz. Phone Booth, he has the lead, but that's kind of a small movie. And then you look at Daredevil, that is more of a vehicle for for Affleck. And then he does do Alexander, doesn't do that well. But certainly in these movies, he's either the lead or the co-lead and he's just killing it and he's doing he's being very successful and he's kind of doing the leading man role now when he was younger he was quite handsome now i don't know if he was up there with jude law handsome you remember when jude law busted into the scene and ripley it's like oh my god this guy was like kissed by the sun and apollo combined and I don't know if he's that handsome when he was younger. And Farrell is not that necessarily that tall of a guy, too. So he doesn't have that classic height. Not that Jude Law has classic height. But either way, if you look at the beginning of his career, the beginning of his career was the typical leading man. And then about 
five years in, he really changes and he starts going to smaller roles. In Bruges, for example, is a classic movie. And the reason we're, we're doing the, the the filmography, so to speak, of, of Farrell is because he's getting love for Banshees of Anna Sharon, which I've seen. It's a good movie and it's kind of a comedy, kind of like in the same in the same uh, vein as in Bruges and also has his, the same co-star in it. But then you look at you look at the movies he does later on. So it's on Dean, small, very role, Neil Jordan, triage. Right? And he's got a small role. He does a little comedy with Fright Night. I remember that was a remake of the old Fright Night from the 80s. He does Horrible Bosses. Great, great cameo as one of the bad bosses in Horrible Bosses. But then you, you go down. He's doing Saving Mr. Banks. He's doing Winner's Tale, Shakespeare. He's doing Miss Julie which I believe is Strindberg, if I remember my drama correctly. Then he does The Lobster in 2015. That's Lanthimos. That's his, uh, I think that, they think that's his first time he's working with Lanthimos because he's done it a couple of times, if I'm not mistaken. And he's great in that. And he gets a lot of love for that. Then he, he just does The Beguiled, Sofia Coppola's movie, where he is the soldier that stumbles upon an all-girls school boarding house. And it's got Kirsten Dunst and Kidman in it in Al Fanning. He's in that as well. Again, so he's just doing smaller roles. Here and then he's doing mainstream ones, like he does Dumbo. But he's he's going more toward character movies. Movies where he's he's playing as a character actor. And he's kind of eschewing the the leading man. Now, is part of this because he's not getting roles as a leading man anymore? I I don't know. Clearly, I'm not his agent. But when you look at his filmography, it's definitely making a shift to movies that are much smaller and much more engaging and have better writing. And I think that's to his credit. And I wish Tom Cruise, as you know, May and I have been doing the, the Cruise filmography. I don't know where this is coming out in terms of if it's coming out the Wednesday of part one or part two or part three. But we talked about in, in Cruise, or we will talk about in Cruise 3, how the latter half of Cruise's career is disappointing because I think he's demonstrated he can do the action movies. We don't need more action Cruise. What we need is more Magnolia Cruise. Right? We need more even Jerry Maguire. Something stripped down, something where he plays a father. Like How often do you see Tom Cruise playing the, a father? Aside from for War of the Worlds, but he needs some sort of like drama some small indie movies. The guy has tons of money. It's not like he can't afford it. And you see that with Colin Farrell. So certainly Farrell is not Cruz's age. He's at least 16 years his junior. But I think Farrell is a good demonstration of someone who has a lot in common with Cruz. When they were both young, very charismatic, very young. Look, they both have the raven hair. They even kind of look like short raven hair men. And they they both kind of have the same career. Of course, Cruz is, is timeless and much better. Uh, but then you see Farrell pivot. And I just wish Cruz would pivot. And he still has time. He's 60. But I wish he would have that career where, where he turned and just did more art house flicks, more indie flicks, movies like In Bruges, you know, In Bruges kind of <laughs> has some similarities to Collateral, I suppose. But just smaller movies that demonstrate that, oh yeah, Cruz can act. And I think that's what Farrell did. See, Farrell made the money early on being kind of the leading man, right? And then he's like, kind of like Michelle Williams, we have an episode here. Like, I think ultimately he realized that he likes juicier roles in that early in his career he he did these big roles but ultimately they weren't fulfilling they didn't fulfill him and i think he probably thought it didn't demonstrate his acting ability and so he's like i'm going to do smaller movies they're not going to give me as much money but i mean to be honest they're hollywood celebrities and they can make money off endorsements and he has enough money so he's like i'm going to do smaller movies here and there i'm going to do the the big movies uh, to get the money, right? But overall, I'm just going to do smaller movies and this is going to be my career. So I think with with Farrell, you're going to see this 
continue. The guy is still young, mid 40s, and you're going to see him do movies like Banshees, where maybe he'll get an Academy Award, or or he's going to set up Brendan Gleeson maybe to get an Oscar nod, and he's going to do these more private, intimate movies that are going to show off his range. Because that's the thing: if Farrell has range, he can do. I don't know if his is at his age he can necessarily do the go back and do cruise action, but we've seen it demonstrate in the past that he can be a charismatic leading man. But he also has a lot of humor. He's great on Saturday Night Live. If you've ever seen my Saturday Night Live, and of course in Bruges and some of these other movies, he can show off his comedic range. And I think you're going to see him do these indie movies, these small movies, supporting roles in bigger movies, and then occasionally kind of do the, the, the big movies to get the paycheck. And I just wish Cruz would have done this because Cruz doesn't need to prove to everybody that he can jump out of a helicopter, fly a helicopter, jump, you know, hang on the side of a plane, hang on the side of a car. Like, what are you trying to prove, Tom Cruise? I think if anything, if you want to secure your legacy, go back and do the more intimate movies. And as May and I talked about in part three, there's nothing to suggest that he's going to do that. And it's sad because I think what's best for his legacy is not continuing to do these movies. Perhaps he thinks what's best for his legacy is that he dies doing one of the MI movies or Edge of Tomorrow or whatever. But I think what's best for his legacy as he enters the, the last third of his life is do what other leading action people did. Like, think of Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds was such a stud in the 70s. I mean, he had charisma. Just put him in a car, drive him around, and that's a big hit, like in the Smokey the Bandit movies. But then he comes back later with Boogie Nights. And he's great in Boogie Nights. And just to see Cruz do that kind of role, a dark role, like I don't think he was in Collateral, but like a dark role or just a meteor role and something that's not the action flick. Let's see him release a movie like in November that's kind of a more Oscar bait, more dramatic turn. And I just wish he would do that. And I wish he would show off his comedic chops because Cruz does have comedic chops, most famously in Tropic Thunder, but you kind of see it also in movies like Jerry Maguire. He has range like Farrell has range. I think Farrell just demonstrates it and makes better choices with his career than Cruz. And I think Cruz, whether like May believes it's the Scientology thing or his it's agents or if it's his ego or he's just surrounded by bad sick offense or giving him advice, I don't know what it is, but the guy has enough money and the best thing for his legacy is to pivot and do movies like Colin Farrell is doing. And kudos to Farrell. I hope you eventually get an Academy Award. He, has, he got a Golden Globe uh, for Banshees uh, this time around. And I wouldn't be surprised if later in his career he does get an Academy Award or two because he is talented and I think Hollywood respects him. And speaking of his private life, his private life is pretty interesting because this is the cinema rag. So we do talk about private life. He is reputed to, in his peak in the 2002, 2003s, bedded some interesting women. I think it's well known that he bedded uh, Britney Spears and Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay Lohan, uh, when she was in rehab, wrote a list of all of her lovers. I think it was some, some sort of activity that she had to do. And Farrell was was on that list because that list got leaked. And he, he's been with a lot of other well-known celebrities. But as a whole, he keeps his private life pretty private. He did have a child out of wedlock who about 10, 15 years ago that apparently has developmental issues. He has been uh, dating here and there women, but he keeps it on the down low. He's not one of those like Brad Pitt, Ben Affleck, who, who like to be out and about showing off who they're dating. And he's been pretty open about his, his drug addiction and addiction to prescription drugs. And uh, he, you know, he, he lived that wayward life when, when he was younger. And I think he's kind of uh, uh, skewed that as well as he's going to his more mature life. So he's definitely one of those guys who wanted to live the Hollywood party life when he was younger. And he's one of those guys that realized that that life is kind of empty. And so now he doesn't really pursue that as much. So kudos to him. And I wish him the best. I think he's done great with his career, similar to what we talked about with Margot Robbie and Michelle Williams. Guys, I'll post a, a poll over at the Cinema Rag Facebook page. You let me know what you think of Farrell. Until next time, take care, God bless, and pray. Thanks for listening to the Cinema Rag. 
please post an honest review on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Check out the episode notes to visit our website and to make a donation. Lastly, follow the rag today. Until next time.